Time has come to put up or shut up. Today, a new season begins on American Gladiators. Gary Wilson, he put everyone to shame at the contender tryouts doing 40 chin-ups in 30 seconds. Not bad for an exotic dancer. Ready, Nitro? His opponent, Kaz Worthington from Amerinac, New York, a third-degree black belt in karate. He's feisty and he's fast. Gladiator can't stop, but a gladiator can't see. I'm blazing hot today. On the women's side, she was raised in Oslo, Norway. But now Terrell Torgerson is a California girl, ready to show what she's got. Waiting for Terrell is a woman who knows how to get down and dirty, 27-year-old Christy Kropp from Minneapolis. I'm ready to drill some gladiators today. Well, Christy, the American gladiators say, come on and get it. Ladies and gentlemen, from Gladiator Arena in Los Angeles, California, here are your American gladiators. Thunder, Lace, Nitro, Gold, Blazer, Ice, Turbo, Blaze, Gemini. The Samuel Goldwyn Company presents the American Gladiators. Let the games begin. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley. Glad you could join us for a brand new season of the American Gladiators. Actually, two new seasons as we'll crown a first half winner, a second half winner, and ultimately a grand champion. Once again, we have selected an outstanding group of men and women, 48 contenders who emerged from a nationwide tryout that included over 10,000 hopefuls. And in addition to that grand championship, they'll be vying for over 175,000 in cash and prizes. That includes a brand new car. And new is the operative word here at Gladiator Arena. We have a new event, two new events, one called Swing Shot. You'll see that a little bit later. That'll knock your socks off. The final event, the Eliminator, has been revamped. It's new and improved, more difficult than ever. And the Gladiators will be wearing brand new uniforms. Now, speaking of Gladiators, we are rejoined by an old friend. Her name is Zap. She is back fitter than ever, and we're glad to have you back. We missed you. How's it feel to be back? Thanks, Michael. Well. I may not have been here physically, but I was always here mentally and spiritually with them, the Gladiators. And I've got four new games to try out. I'm ready to go. They're glad to have you back. We're glad to have you back. Stay healthy, stay hungry. I'm also going to be rejoined from my co-host from a year ago. He's Hall of Fame fullback Larry Zonka, and he's standing by with the Gladiators in the locker room. Larry? Thanks, Mike. It's good to be back. I'm down here in the training room with Nitro, who got off to a little bit of a sour start yesterday as he sprained both ankles in a practice round. How about it, Nitro? Are you going to be ready to compete? Well, I think one thing you can't measure, Larry, is intensity, and intensity overrides pain. So I think there'll be no question that Nitro will be ready to dominate again. Mike, sounds like this dog's ready to hunt. Back to you. A bad omen good? for Kaz and Gary. Time will tell. Woo! How you people doing out there? Me and Kaz are ready to tear it up, everybody. Get, all, get ready for a good show. That show will start with Atlasphere, and Atlasphere is brought to you by M&M Chocolate Candies. Have a handful of smiles. As Gary Wilson loads into his Atlasphere, Gary comes to us from St. Petersburg, Florida. Six foot tall, 29 years old, 190 pounds, and is a part-time exotic dancer. He's going to have to dance to this tune. There's Kaz Worthington, who comes to us from Maranek, New York, 26 years old, 5'7", 165 pounds, computer operator, and also a karate expert. Atlasphere, of course, our 60-second game of endurance, where each goal is worth two points. Our contenders will try to maneuver their spheres into one of four scoring pods against our two gladiators, in this case, Gemini and Nitro. Our referee, Larry Thompson, about to start the match. The contenders have 60 seconds to score as many times as they can. Maneuver those atmospheres inside the scoring pods, which are numbered this year. And a cosmic collision right off the bat. Nitro working against Gary Wilson keeps him out of that scoring pod. And Gemini has got Kaz Worthington all tied up. Gary rolling across the pod, but unable to make it score. Kaz has got a breakaway. Can Gemini catch him and knock him out of there? You can see there's little sensors inside each of those scoring pods that will activate them. Activate the scoring mechanism. 
Neither contender has scored. 20 seconds remain. Again, can't, Kaz can't get it to settle. Kaz with a great movement, but unable to score the points. I'll tell you what, the Gladiators on the verge of pitching a shutout here, so to speak. Oh, Gary Wilson almost had a goal. Well, Wilson gets it. Get it count. Was left on the clock, we'll have to see. After all that effort by Kaz and being in the scoring pod so many times and not getting it, finally, right at the end, it appeared that he finally got a point. Two points. One score. One score, two, two points. points. Two points, yellow. <laughs> so one Kaz point, Worthington on the clock. One, with one, with one second left on the clock, was able to score. At one goal worth two points. So he takes the early lead in his preliminary round matchup with Gary Wilson. The women are next in coming out of the locker room on their way to the field of play. Christy Kropp on the left against Terrell Torgeson. A pair of fine athletes. This should be a great preliminary round matchup. One of the gladiators they'll have to get by, Blaze. She's getting loaded into her atmosphere. Done right in the center. Terrell Georgeson buckling up, getting into her Atlas Sphere, 23 years old, 135 pounds. She comes to us from San Bernardino, California. She's an agricultural aide. She catches medflies. And there's Christy Kropp, a track and field All-American. Comes to us from Andover, Minnesota, construction worker and a tough gal. And the other gladiator, Zap, she's a tough customer okay. as well. Contenders ready. Gladiators ready. And a nice move right off the bat by Terrell. Actually, both gladiators or contenders, rather, going towards the same end. Terrell, despite weighing just 135 pounds, really has her atmosphere moving and scores first. Each goal worth two points. Terrell now on the move again, so is Christy. And Christy has a score. Terrell has another one in scoring pot number three. Both female contenders working very well. Blaze and Zap having a tough time. Christy scores in scoring pot number four. 17 seconds remain here. Christy Krop again has scored. And Terrell, can she get it down in scoring pot number three? Roll out there. And they've given Christy a score in pod number one. Zap trying to do her darndest with Terrell keeping her out of scoring pod number two, and that is it. But a great effort by both our contenders, Terrell Torgeson and Christy Kropp. A great way to get things started. And as Thunder gets taped up for the rest of the day's competition, get ready for our next event in Assault. And as advertised in the top of our show, one of our two new games, the mid-air suspense of Swing Shot. That's still ahead. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California, and Lace is pumped up, and why not? This next event is her best, the Salt, our 60-second game of hit or be hit. And a new twist this season, contenders will be able to pick up one point for every weapon they successfully fire. The ideal, of course, to hit that target located above the Gladiator, that's worth 10. Terrell trailing Christy, that's got to be a concern, and there's another major concern, Lace, who's one of the best in the business. 23-13 kind of says it all. Terrell Torgeson on her way and about to find out just how steady her nerves are. That looked pretty steady. Close, but no score, Mike. You can always tell by the crowd with the oohs and the ahs. They're right in there with it, isn't it? And that shot a bit low. So far, it's a good thing that Terrell's getting points for each weapon she handles because she's got very close to the target. Shot getting, with a cannonball almost hit. Getting closer. Terrell's got some quick feet, Larry. The soccer player is, uh, has at least bounces one off the, off the pistol. Oh, just to the right. Again, she came mighty close. Hit. Terrell successfully engaged six or four weapons, rather, earns four points, but with time running out, Lace was able to pick her off. Terrell doing a nice job of throwing her body here, 
you got to give Lace credit. She times it well. And that four-point effort is at the moment full Terrell even. Twenty-seven-year-old Christy Kropp from Andover, Minnesota, is up next, and right now she is tied with Terrell Torgerson at eight apiece. Golden opportunity here for her to regain the lead. All-American in track and field, Mike, and she moves like a cat. Again, a contender earns one point for every weapon they successfully engage. That means fire. She gets that one off, and she hits the target. At least it appears to me that she hit the target. Actually, the outer rim of it, so. The outer perimeter, yeah, she didn't hit the bullseye. The red square oh, does not count. And the that's rocket and the tennis ball hit mid-air. <laughs> we have never seen that before, Lace. She's so accurate, she's able to pick off the weapons in mid-air. My Shades goodness. Shades of the OK Corral, point blank, point blank. Low and outside with a pistol, right under the gun. We talked about how athletic she was. She's looking right down the barrel of that gun and dodging the balls. Seven seconds remaining. She's going to cross that finish line. She can earn another point. She does so. She'll get six points for engaging all five weapons, plus crossing the finish line without it? being hit. Mike, you can tell just how intense this gal is. She doesn't even know that she made it. Well, the men are set to weave their way through this assault course. Gary Wilson, the carpenter and exotic dancer, is up first. He'll draw a laser who's extremely accurate and relentless with that cannon. And Larry, if there was ever a time for Gary to wiggle those dancers' hips, I guess this is it. <laughs> Gary Wilson wastes no time using his speed across there. Shot with the crossbow, went low, but that earned him a point. Again, each station, each weapon, contender successfully engaged with one point. Gary's got two. Again, the contenders working against the clock. They've got 60 seconds to hit that target. Gary Wilson now down to 20. Laser almost picked him off in the hand there. Whoa! Oh, a little slide into second base. <laughs> Gary using the Sergeant York <laughs> technique. He's down nine seconds. Laser got him. Ball skinned him right at the corner. Man, good thing I got him there. How low can you go? Well, Gary Wilson finds out he doesn't go low enough. However, he does take a 5-2 lead over Kaz Worthington. Laser pumps up the crowd a little bit and says, bring on the next contender. Kaz Worthington is up now. He trails Gary 5-2, but Kaz with a big chance to regain the lead as well. Ready! 5'7", 165 pounds, excellent quickness. Ran a 4'8", 40 in the tryouts. That shot with the crossbow almost took Laser's costume off. Kaz setting himself again, his shot a bit low, but he has two points, and he gets picked off at that point. But he does close the gap to 5'4". Yeah, took him down. Kaz's double clutch stutter step backfired as Laser nailed him in midair. But our contenders have plenty of chances left. Up next, an event that stretches everyone to the limit. Hang tough. <laughs> well, welcome back to Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California. The event, Hang Tough. And first up in this men's preliminary round will be Kaz Worthington, who trails Gary Wilson by a point, five to four. Now in Hang Tough, the contender has 60 seconds to go across these rings, and there's 55 of them. Get to the Gladiator's platform. If he can do that, he'll earn 10 points. However, Turbo, mighty, mighty tough in this event, Larry. Just about unbeaten. I don't think anyone's ever uh, really beaten him and got to the platform. They have tied him. That's about the best anyone has done against him. Kaz Worthington always smiling through the practice and the early events. He looks pretty serious now, doesn't he, Mike? 
Sure does. Turbo with a winning percentage, however, of 625. A contender can also earn five points if they can go the entire 60 seconds without being pulled off those rings. But look how smooth Turbo is. Kaz thinking twice about straight up the gut because it's leading him right into Turbo. Kaz made good. a nice little Getting... move. He's past Turbo right now. If he can find another ring, he may be home free. Turbo in trouble. Kaz Worthington on his way to 10 points. Can he do it? This may be a first. Big gamble here. Turbo's never been He's beat on the And Kaz Worthington punctuates his performance with a little karate kick up on top of that platform. <laughs> he picks up 10 points and has taken the lead over Gary Wilson, getting by the heretofore unbeatable Turbo. He is going down. Turbo obviously suffering the sting of the defeat, but it stirred his competitive juices, and now he's looking forward to the next contender. So Gary Wilson has his work cut out for him as we look at Turbo, and no doubt in Turbo's mind is what happened to him against Kaz Worthington. Turbo, Turbo pointing down and saying, Gary, you're as good as on the mat, my friend. Ready? Well, Gary finds himself on the tail end of a 14-5 deficit, so he dearly needs points and hang tough. Gary, very fluid, the man who did 40 pull-ups during the tryouts in 30 seconds. Turbo a little more selective in his approach here, staying right in the middle. He's almost chest to chest with him. Both men here waiting it for comes. a look out. Gary Wilson waited too long, and that was it for that man. Turbo's back to form. I think that's a good strategy on the part of all the contenders. Do not get Turbo angry. <laughs> Quickest takedown ever, incidentally. Not an easy guy to hang around with either, Mike. Took Turbo 20 seconds to take down Gary Wilson. And now, Mike, it's Christy Krop's turn. She's faced stiff competition before. This All-American from the University of Wisconsin. She's got her work cut out for her here. Because the woman she'll have to do battle with is Ice, who is undefeated in Hag Tough. Her overall winning percentage over 83%. Her fastest takedown, 14 seconds. And there's the lead that Christy Ready? enjoys over Terrell at the moment. Ice has that deadly move. Catches up to the contender and then locks him in that vice-like grip of her legs. Strips him right off the rings. We may see it here in just a few moments. Christy's got a good line going, trying to go out to the outside. Ice trying to head her off. See that leg movement? <laughs> just enough to make Christy change directions. And now she's hanging on for dear life. Ice oh so close to getting those powerful legs wrapped around Christy Kropp. Go get her. The contender does have to make an effort to advance, but right now all Christy is thinking about is hanging on and staying away from those <laughs> legs. Ice almost has her. Looks like a black widow spider out there. <laughs> spider in the fly. Can Christy hang on? She's lost all of her momentum. Five seconds to go. It looks like Christy will be able to hang on. She does, and she's earned five points for the draw. Ice obviously a little bewildered by that stalemate. She likes to taste victory on every event. As a result, Christy has now increased her lead to 19-8, but Terrell can climb right back in it with a solid effort here. Terrell, like Christy, will also face Ice Ice Baby. You know, Mike, Terrell mentioned to us earlier in her job as an agriculture inspector, she has to put up with being chased by mad dogs. Uh, let's see how she does here. <laughs> no question about it, Ice has plenty of bite. Ready? Ice takes that deep breath and off she goes in pursuit of Terrell Torgeson. Mike, both athletes kind of watching each other, waiting for the other to commit. Terrell taking that outside line. She's passed Ice. Oh. She's got momentum in her favor if she can escape those legs, but Ice able to stop Terrell's momentum. Now Terrell desperately trying to hang on. 
30 seconds remaining. I don't think she can Whoa. do it. Ice too powerful. Down goes Terrell Torgerson. Ice is back. Ice a little cooler, calmer, more collected. Right down the middle of the rings. Waited for a moment and then took advantage of it. Give her credit, Larry. Terrell tried to be the immovable object, but Ice's irresistible force proved to be too much. Ice gets a thumbs up from the Gladiator. After three events, our karate instructor, Kaz Worthington, has a 14-5 lead over Gary Wilson. By virtue of the 10 points, Kaz scored and hang tough, and in doing so, Kaz becomes the first contender ever to beat Turbo in that event. Kaz, he's down in our locker room right now, and uh, that must be quite a fine feeling to know that you beat the man. <laughs> Yeah, and an honor, too, because I know he's well-seasoned and just glad to be here and give it my all. Kaz, the one thing that seems to separate you from the other contenders, at least right now, is that, that great energy you have and that, that love for life, that zest. Uh, is that part of your strategy for, throughout this competition? Definitely. I do it for myself and all those who support me. I love you all. Okay, keep, uh, keep smiling, keep that energy level up. Thank Congratulations. You. Thanks a lot. And the man Kaz defeated in Hank Tuff joins us now from the Gladiator locker room. Turbo, every streak ultimately comes to an end, but I'm sure you didn't expect uh, Kaz Worthington, a man who is uh, 5'9 and about 170 pounds, to, to beat you in your favorite event, Hank Tough. What happened? Well, I'm not the kind of guy to make excuses. I'm just the kind of guy to make promises, and I guarantee you that he will never beat me at anything again. Turbo, enough said. That challenge laid down. Turbo's partners are getting ready for power. <laughs> Welcome back to Gladiator Arena, where Kaz Worthington leads Gary Wilson 14-5 after three events. Powerball is next. The object here to score as many times as possible in 45 seconds. Goals in the outer cylinders worth two points. A goal in the center cylinder worth three. And Kaz and Gary will have to deal with Laser, Gemini, and Thunder. Mike, this is our Gladiator's first round Powerball in the new season. i tell you what, our two contenders are going to have to deal with that mountain of flesh. Gary's going to have to dance his way through a lot of big, angry people. And Powerball is brought to you by Nintendo, makers of Super NES. Now you're playing with power, super power. <laughs> Gary Wilson, quick to score as he gets by Laser. Great move by Kaz there on Laser. It's all even. Gary getting double teamed by Gemini and Laser. He goes down. Thunder throws Kaz out of bounds. Again, the Gladiators thwart the contenders. Oh, Kaz has that shot roll around the cylinder. As Gary gets knocked out of bounds by Laser, he's a little slow in coming up, but there he is, back on his feet. Less than 10, 10 seconds. Laser nearly takes Kaz's head off. As Gemini buries and Gary on the far it. side. Woo! Two to the final. Both Kaz and Gary get a goal. Well, they're all smiling now, but look what happened to Gary when he tried a power move with the two gladiators. He got to eat some turf. Kaz, on the other hand, with a fake and go, but pays the consequences also. So Kaz retains on, his nine-point edge over Gary Wilson with three events remaining. Now, in a few weeks, we'll be unveiling one of two new events here on American Gladiators. What evil lurks behind the panels of the maze? Undernose. That's coming soon, but up right now, the women will go at it in Powerball. Zap, Gold, and Blaze for sure are ready. So a daunting task for Christy Kropp and Terrell Torgeson. Right now, Christy with a 19-8 lead. And Mike, both these girls have demonstrated their athletic ability, but now they're about to encounter something new, contact. As we look at Terrell Torgerson, who was born in Oslo, Norway, they don't have games like Powerball over there, do they, Mike? Norway. <laughs> Ready! <laughs> Christy Krop using the red scoring balls. Terrell Torgerson, the blue. Christy has scored early. Zap trying to keep her and knocks her out of bounds. She can't score. Terrell gets double teamed by Blazing Gold. Christy one up, makes a move on two gladiators and puts it in the pie. Zap, of course, back this season shows 
that she hasn't missed too much, lost too much oh. of her prowess, but a nice move mm -hmm. there by Terrell. And a nice move by, by Christy. Nice head fake back. I'll tell you what, our female contenders are finding out that their quickness can work against our female gladiators. Christy being hemmed in by Gold and Zap now tries the power move. Ball is Gold over. Christy with her shoulders upfield like a fullback. Wow, that's nice it. Nice job. <laughs> I'm not sure that Terrell has ever been hit like that before, or Christy for that matter. Well, Mike, both girls demonstrated they could take the punishment, but look at these fancy moves as Terrell puts a nice fake on Zap, scoring two points. And here, Christy gets upfield, gives that little head fake on gold, and blows by for two points. Christy explaining her case to gold, say, I'm sorry I steamrolled you, but she did increase her lead after four events, 25-10. Up next on the American Gladiators, hand-to-hand -hand combat with pugil sticks, it's the joust. Get in on the action and join the American Gladiators Fan Club. Send $3 check or money order to American Gladiators, Van Nuys, California, 91463-0001. Or pick up a fan club application from your local dental nutrition center. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California, and the women are set to joust. Terrell Torgerson is up first. She trails Christy Kropp by 15. A win here would certainly help her cause. And with Powerball under her belt, Terrell's certainly ready for some hard knocks. She'll have to go against Lace. Victory in this event worth 10 points. A draw, if a contender can last the entire 30 seconds without getting knocked off, is worth five. And perhaps the toughest thing for the contender hanging on to those pugil sticks, pretty wide circumference. Terrell with strong legs, but I question that upper body strength. Uh, eh, she drew well, though. Lace. Uh... I don't know, what's Lace batting in this, Mike? About 300? Two for four in previous competitions, or two wins and four losses, but this is the new and improved Lace. She's about 20 pounds heavier. With a lot of weight training during the offseason. <laughs> Terrell giving her a battle. Lace landing most of the blows. Now Terrell trying to hang on. Oh. Lace has got her off balance. Oh. She ducked one there. <laughs> she caught an uppercut from Lace. Instead of back and Lace steps across. Terrell takes the points. <laughs> and what a big win for her. She trailed Christy Crop by 15 points, 25-10. Lace does a good job of landing a couple of haymakers, but Terrell maintains her balance. As a matter of fact, goes back and intimidates Lace a little bit. Lace gets over enthusiastic and steps across, committing the foul. Christy Crop up now. She'll be doing battle against Lace. She'd like to pad her lead a little more. She leads now 25-20 because Terrell Torgeson picked up 10 points. Christy, of course, the construction worker from Andover, Minnesota, said this is her favorite event because she wields a sledgehammer on the job. See if it pays off. On guard! Lace landing a severe blow to Christie's right jaw, but she doesn't give an inch. Now she's returning fire. Christie with a headshot to Lace. Lace firing back. Ten seconds to go. Oh! Lace on the verge of going, but she regains her balance. This one will end in the draw. Five points for Christy Crop. Christy takes a looking but keeps on ticking and hangs on to her lead, 30 to 20. The men are next with the pugil sticks and Laser will draw the jousting assignment. And he's the subject of a new feature we'll be bringing you this season. We call it Gladiator Moments, highlights and remembrances from battles gone by. Check this Gladiator Moment out with myself and Scott Dieter on joust. It's something that stuck out in my mind a lot. Oh, wow! What a lick he put on laser! These guys are swinging for keeps! He gave me a few shots that I'll always remember. I think it was the first time in uh, my gladiator moments that uh, I've seen some stars, and uh, I think I gave him a few. That's one I'll never forget, and here's laser now. With the joust being one of three events left for Gary Wilson, it's imperative that he scores in this event because he trails 
Kaz Worthington, 16-7. Again, the Gladiators notorious for their quick strike action. They usually get that first blow in. Lays it with a couple of overhands, but it does not get it. And <laughs> what an upset. Lazer's going nuts. He's running out, doing flips out through the audience. He's so upset. Balances everything in this event, and after missing with the overhand right, Gary Wilson uses the leverage of his backhand to send a stunned Laser to the mat. Wow. But Laser will get an instant chance for revenge because Kaz Worthington, who now trails by one, gets his turn. Hell hath no fury like a Laser scorned. He's ready. Kaz, a black belt karate instructor, third degree. Here's his chance. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, and that's it. Automatic That's disqualification automatic. for Laser. Anytime a gladiator or contender loses his pugil stick, automatic DQ. Two losses for Laser. He has got to be one depressed and angry gladiator. But this prelim is far from over. Two events to go. Up next, our newest one. Wild Slayer in midair. We call it Swing Shot. One of the two new events in American Gladiators this season is something we call Swing Shot. And if you love Peter Pan and Superman, you are going to adore this event. Two contenders, three gladiators, all atop 15-foot platforms, all attached to bungee cords. The object for the contenders to leap from the platform, spring from the floor using the bungee cord, and try to grab one of those yellow, blue, or red balls attached to the center cylinder, and then spring back up to the platform and deposit the ball in the scoring pod above. The gladiator's mission, obviously, to stop the contenders from doing that. It is absolutely wild. Christy Krop ready for her go around, still enjoying that 10 point lead. As Terrell steadies herself on her bungee cord, she's going to face off with our gladiators, Ice, Blaze, and the Zapster. Contenders ready! Gladiators ready! Last minis, both contenders, both contenders back get a point. ball, and uh, if they can put them back in those scoring pods, they'll be able to get on the scoreboard. Christy back. Oh, almost a takeaway by Zap. Here comes Christy again, and she gets Christy it. Christy takes off three. She took the entire Velcro <laughs> strip off, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy way to make five points. Let's take the whole band. Zap getting mighty close, and look at Terrell. Oh, she had a blue ball in her hand and lost it. Christy back up. Here comes Gold. After ah. six events, Christy has an 11 point lead. And despite a great effort by Christy Krop of taking all the balls and going home, referee Larry Thompson says, uh-uh, you only get to keep one. And here we see Terrell Torgerson doing a great job of demonstrating just how to play swing shot. Men's swing shot is up, and right now, Kaz Worthington in the blue against Gary Wilson in the gray. Kaz with a nine-point lead at this point in the competition, 26-17. For the Gladiators, it'll be Thunder, Turbo, and Gemini. Gary Wilson looking very good in his practice rounds. Was going on up to the red balls, Mike. We'll see how he does when the Gladiators are coming the other way. Contenders ready. Ditto for cause, Larry. Gladiators ready. He can get, he can get up there, too. Here, Here they we go. go. Whoa. Well, <laughs> balls fall <laughs> everywhere. Cause comes back with a point. And he heads right back for another. <laughs> Not sure there are going to be any balls left. Kaz couldn't get that one back in. Got to get high. Jump. It was like a bull hitting a Christmas hey, tree. Oh, both of them got a blue ball. Kaz, I tell you what, great effort by Kaz and Gary, both to get blue balls. Kaz went up again, nothing there in that Velcro oh. strip. Oh, Gary almost had a red. Thunder about the only gladiator alive right now. 
to keep the contenders from scoring. Balls lying on the arena wow. floor everywhere. And Mike, what a great introduction of our new game of swing shot. Both our contenders come down here, perfect execution, go up and take the blue balls, return to the pedestals, and do a good job of stashing them away. So after six events, Kaz Worthington has a 29-19 lead over Gary Wilson. But there's one little last piece of business to take care of, and that's the new and improved Eliminator. That event will decide everything, who advances and who goes home. We'll have that as American Gladiators continues after this. A berth in the next round is on the line as the women are set for the final event, the Eliminator. And this year's version has been revamped a bit to increase the difficulty and make for a more exciting race. Now, after pushing hard up and against a reverse treadmill and then pumping the legs and the arms to move a hand bike across this handrail, contenders will encounter a new twist, this spinning cylinder which can send a contender flying in a number of directions. A fall here could be costly. Then once again, it's up an unsteady and none too forgiving cargo net. And then a breather for the contenders, but a minor one, a wild ride down the zip line. And then crunch time. First, this eight foot wall must be scaled. However, on the other side, well, trouble. In the form of two gladiators who will try to pin the contenders with giant sized medicine balls. And then finally, the stretch run. This time, the gladiators will get one last shot bombardment from above. <laughs> Good spell, the beginning or the end. From there, beyond that, well, the finish line and pay dirt and a chance to move on. At the moment, Terrell Torgeson trails Christy Krop and another twist, a brand new Eliminator scoring format where a contender gets one half second of head start time for every point in the lead. Christy leads 33-22, thus that 11 point lead will give her a five and a half second head start in this race. Want me to go up there? Can Terrell make up the difference? Let's find out. She's with Larry at the start line. Larry? Terrell, you're going to have to stand here for five and a half seconds, chewing your lip and sweating while your opponent goes on in. What are you going to do when you launch into it? Are you going to gamble big or are you going to be conservative? Well, depending on how it goes for her. If she falls or something, I'll capitalize on her mistakes. But if not, I'll have to go out and gamble. <laughs> oh. Nothing to lose. <laughs> OK, gal, have at it. Larry, one thing I forgot to mention, as if there's not enough pitfalls for the contenders, if they fall off the hand bike, they are detained by two gladiators, in this case, Laser and Nitro, for a total of 10 seconds. Well, Mike, there's already enough tension in just the head-to-head -head combat. When you bring in the new facets of the Eliminator and add that pressure, this thing turns into a real pressure cooker. Once again, Christy Crop on the left-hand portion of your screen with a five and a half second head start. Ready? Christy off first. Working her way up that treadmill, it's tough, and here comes Terrell. Terrell has made it up and has made up some time. Now, if either woman falls off the hand bike, they will be held down by the gladiators in a holding pen. Terrell will have to stay there now for 10 seconds. Christy looks like she's gonna make it across, but just barely. Now across the spinning logs, and oh! Great effort by Christy. Takes a long dive and makes it to the top of the platform and up the cargo net. Ditto for Terrell. She makes it across, too, and look at this. She is caught up. She's made up a lot of room. And oh, Mike, it's looking like a photo finish right here. I'll tell we'll you see what, what there, happens. Despite that five and a half second head start and the 10 second penalty, for Terrell, she has made up a lot of room. Down the zip line they come and almost side by side here. What the gladiators do in the gauntlet will tell the tale. Christie over the wall first, but just barely. Side by side, here they come. Christie avoids one more two the first. She has done it, I think. Oh, so close. Christy right at the wire has nipped Terrell Torgerson and has gone on to the second round. Christy, you were all out. This is a very emotional time. Yeah. Time you're right on the edge of tears. It's a tough time, but you got to be happy. This is tougher than any track event ever. 
Well, congratulations. Before we celebrate too much, let's go over and see what happens in the men's division. Good job. Well, I'll tell you what, the men will be hard pressed to duplicate that fantastic photo finish that Christy Kropp and Terrell Torgerson put on for us in the Eliminator, but it could happen again. Kaz Worthington leads by 10 points, and that translates to a five second head start. Can Gary make up the deficit? We'll find out again. Let's go to the start line and Larry Zonka. Larry? Thanks, Mike. Gary, you've had a rough day. Each time you're behind, you blow back, keep yourself in contention. You're going to have to stand here for five seconds and chew your lip. When you hit it, when the whistle blows and you start, are you going to gamble or play it conservative? I'm gambling all the way. I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to hold back. That's it, folks. He's going to lay it on the line. Good luck, Gary. Thank you, Larry. Let's have at it. And Larry, in the men's eliminator, the contenders, if they fall off the handbike, are detained for seven seconds. Gemini and Thunder in the gauntlet. Nitro and Laser on the tower, ready to go. Kaz Worthington in the blue, Gary Wilson in the gray. Again, the first obstacle ready? they have to overcome, that reverse treadmill going full speed. Kaz, who's Kaz pumping those arms, working hard. He makes it to the top. Now five seconds has elapsed. Gary Wilson slips down the treadmill. Gary Wilson now has a ton of time to make up. Gary just across on the handbike and Kaz already atop the cargo net and down the zip line he comes. The young man from Amerinac, New York, the karate instructor being pinned by Thunder and Gemini in the gauntlet. Come on, gentlemen, not allowed to use your arms. Nice backflip there. Nothing's gonna stand in Kaz Worthington's way. He'll cross the finish line first and advance to the second round. As Gary Wilson disappears into the mat after that zip line and perhaps realizing that this eliminator is everything it's cracked up to be. Give Gary credit, he knows Kaz has finished, but he still pushes on. Come on guys, give me a break here. Kaz, a great job, 54 seconds. That's something of a record. A little dedication, a little discipline, huh? That karate helped out. That's right. It's, it's a lot of pain, a lot of endurance. I have to forget about all that and go for what I know. And my, the crowd's been really helpful. And I'm, I'm thank God, everybody who loves me, thank you, I love you back. Thanks. Well, you hung in there and you advanced to the next round. Congratulations. And his friends back home in Mamaronax certainly have plenty of reason to go head over heels over Kaz's performance. The Battle Cat moves on. Next week, more exciting preliminary round action. Until then, for Larry Zonka, I'm Mike Adamley. See you next week on the American Gladiators.